Hello everyone, thanks for joining today's webinar, Safe Returns to Buildings. Uh, my name is Eva, the Marketing Manager here at Pointer. Um, um, so uh, here at Pointer and I'm happy to host today's webinar for you. So before we get started, just a few housekeeping notes. Uh, firstly, uh, this event is an hour webinar with 45 minutes presentations from two of our speakers, it's Robert and Trev, and 15 minutes for the Q&A session. And this webinar is being recorded and will be made available to you afterwards, either via your emails or on our website. And finally, we'll be running a live Q&A at the end of the webinar, where we have allocated 15 minutes in which we will answer your questions there. We have enabled our ask questions uh, feature. It is um, at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions, just uh, pop them in there throughout the webinar. And if you have um, missed anything, don't worry about that. We'll be sending around the on-demand recording when it's available. So today's uh, speakers, we have uh, Robert from Panasonic Lightings Americas and the Traven from Pointer. And I'm going to hand it over to Robert from here. Hello, thank you all for joining this morning and afternoon, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Robert Pickrell. I'm the Director of IoT Sales for Panasonic Lighting Americas. Uh, so I'll hand it over to Trev and let him introduce himself and then we'll get going. Hi everyone, Trevane O'Brien here from Pointer, uh, based in London. Uh, really excited and thank you for everyone for joining today. Uh, and looking forward to it, Robert. So uh, we might as well kick off, shall we? Yes, sir. All right. So um, today we live in the age of a pandemic with COVID-19. Um, and in the workplace, um, there were pre-COVID uh, corporate real estate uh, requirements. And now we have, um, if you want to call it post-COVID or existing COVID requirements. And so what we've done here is outline um, some of the top five priorities that corporate real estate executives have uh, provided feedback on. So the first one is a reentry planning. Um, as we know, many corporations are trying to figure out a way or best practice to get their occupants back into the space and collaborating um, in a face-to-face -face manner. So reentry planning is a, a top priority. Uh, the second part of this to go along with it, of course, is safety. Um, so the, the occupant health is of utmost importance. And so the priorities within corporate real estate have shifted um, from what it used to be into focusing on uh, the personnel factor. The third part of this is the workspace materials. So um, the layout of the spaces, the best practices today, um, which then goes into the employee experience. And so providing a workplace with workplace technology that is a space that people want to be in, that they feel safe, it is very important. And then lastly, um, the digital workplace and smart buildings is something that is on the forefront. Um, so as many of you know, um, this COVID situation has been an accelerator in the transformation process across the board um, and has affected all of us. And for the workplace, uh, things that people talked about um, that were futuristic are now becoming a reality. And, and that's what we want to talk about today is um, from an infrastructure and services standpoint, how we can provide a comprehensive solution that's real, that can be used and be implemented to help with um, workplace technology and COVID reentry going forward. So real quickly, uh, I want to introduce you to uh, Panasonic Lighting Americas. Um, so we are an organization that's comprised of two brands, uh, the Douglas Lighting Controls brand, which is based out of Vancouver, Canada. Uh, they've been around for over 50 years, so they were acquired by Panasonic in the mid-2000s. And uh, the other brand is Universal Lighting Technologies. Uh, again, Panasonic acquired Universal um, in the mid-2000s as well. And together, those two brands form Panasonic Lighting Americas. 
and together with these solutions, we provide an end-to-end -end, um, digital lighting system or digital ceiling uh, for today's IoT needs across a myriad of marketplaces, including workplace. Great. Uh, thanks, Robert, for that. So now over to myself. Um, my name is Serena Bryan, as I mentioned, from Pointer. Um, and we uh, have been a partner uh, with Panasonic Lighting Americas for, for quite some time. Um, you may or may not have heard about us, but, you know, we are Pointer. We call ourselves a deep location company. And all we do and all we love to do is indoor location services, which you, know, you may or not, may not be familiar with, um, especially if you're in the lighting control world. You, you probably are familiar with it, but, you know, we, you know, have been around since 2013, you know, we were a startup that identified a gap in market. And then since then, you know, completely the acceleration, uh, especially in, in recent months, even for more so is a, a been around, well, how can we digitize buildings and these large venues? And so, you know, we provide an offering and have around five patents around uh, indoor location technology. And, and what that means is both app, and app-free based location is what we specialize in. Uh, and so, you know, some of the logos that you see, you might see us, you know, supporting you to get, getting you to the gate on time, you know, when flying through Chicago or Hare Airport, or when you're visiting, you know, some of your customers uh, and entering their buildings, you know, we're enabling that whole uh, middleware for that smart building layer through indoor location services. So through the partnership with Panasonic, you know, we'll, we'll walk you through and how we can combine our technology being indoor location services with uh, you know, Panasonic's uh, lighting infrastructure there. So that moves into, well, the current state of play in the market uh, and, and the challenges that what we, our customers and the market is demanding from us as well as Panasonic. And so let me just walk you through in terms of, well, what, how we're being able to support the safe re-entry back to the workplace and the types of challenges our customers and partners uh, in collaboration with Panasonic are supporting is, well, you know, that whole re-entry back to work or that essential warehouse or production facility needs to keep operating and we don't want to have to shut it down. So giving the tools to be able to support, well, who is coming into contact with who within that building, that factory, that distribution center or that food production uh, warehouse, for example, how many people are in my building at any point in time. I have no way of understanding live real-time data based on how many people are across my buildings at any point in time um, and being able to capture that to make real-time decisions. And then also going into, well, I know that, you know, due to local compliance laws, I can have only so many people in a particular area or within that site at any point in time, I need to show to my employees and my local governments that, right, I have the tools to understand what areas are congested within those sites. And then as well, that's been coming up for us in, in recent months is, well, you know, in, you know, when I shut down that site, I need to keep a record to understand, you know, has cleaning been done in that facility uh, and then being able to log that accordingly. Um, some interesting points of we've had people wanting to save on insurance premiums or simply for audit and compliance standards. And then how do I get to my employees from point A to point B on my particular site um, and navigating them away from a particular area without having to shut down that whole entire site? So some of these pain points might be, you know, similar to your current industry um, or your customers might be asking you about them, but this is what we've identified and, and leveraged our existing expertise in indoor location services and, and being able to provide an offering called uh, Return to Work, which I'll walk you through in the, in the moment. But would love to hear about other challenges or pain points that you're currently seeing in market. And so that's, that's led us into, well, okay, what can we offer? What can we offer employee, employers to support their employees and keep their operations opening for that you know, return to work? Or you might already be back in the office. So how do we make sure that your workplace is ready uh, for when sending uh, employees back. And so what we've done is created an offering called Point to Work Safe, uh, as I mentioned, is leveraging our existing expertise. 
And so what Point to WorkSafe is built up on in, in supporting those pain points in which you've seen uh, uh, previously is contact tracing. So you might see you know, in the press and media around how governments are trying to build their own mobile applications to be able to support things like contact tracing for citizens. But we actually have contact tracing that does work, is available and ready to go. And so simply what we're doing is, is providing a mobile application that is measuring the number of interactions and the average contact duration. And so there's no infrastructure required on this front. This is something that we can make available now uh, and ship within a couple of days so that all the employees would have a mobile application to understand who they're coming to contact with and then provide those insights to the employer uh, to be able to you know, allow people to self-isolate or be notified um, once that data or someone has been able to notify to self-isolate. So I'll show you a demonstration shortly, but I'll just, you know, I'd love to hear questions around contact tracing towards the end. Um, but this is something that is ready to go now and available. In terms of you're probably thinking, well, how do we protect employees' privacy? Um, you know, that's a very hot topic and, and we've been operating in this space, you know, for more than a couple of years now around protecting privacy. And what we've done is when we ship a mobile app, our point to return to work uh, mobile application, what we're doing is shipping the mobile application, but then assigning an employee ID that we've created that allows the employee to not have to enter in any personal identifiable information, but the employer will see on step three there, a dashboard that shows the various different IDs that are available. So, you know, if an employee does need to self-isolate um, and notify the employer, then they're just simply providing the pointer or the device ID that we make available there. So I'll show you a dashboard on, on how that works um, briefly. Some other, to, in line with some of the pain points that you saw was around occupancy manager. So providing that live occupancy data, um, you can see here on the dashboard, which I'll show you in a moment uh, in real time is, Understanding who is at that site by leveraging GPS technology. So once a person enters that particular building and then being able to set maximum occupancy levels. So, you know, only 100 people can be within that DC warehouse or 500 people within that office, being able to actually be notified uh, when those thresholds have been hit uh, and being alerted accordingly. And then being able to track that occupancy when someone has actually entered the site and left the site. So there's no manual intervention uh, of people having to sign in or out or having to touch anything on arrival, as well as because we specialize in Bluetooth and also you know, leveraging the existing technology GPS, on our Bluetooth learning uh, technology stack offering, we can actually drill down on the zonal based level um, that is leveraging the Panasonic lighting infrastructure to understand, right, how many people are at, at that particular particular floor at any point in time. Things like heat maps as well. So understanding, you know, congested areas, which I mentioned by providing real time data based on where people are spending most amount of time. We've had offices come to us and said, right, or warehouses, everyone going to lunch at that particular time. We might need to stagger that. And we've been able to help that, uh, you know, them make those decisions accordingly. So what I'll do is I'll actually walk you through uh, a video towards the end here, but let me just jump straight into um, an actual demonstration of the types of data and insights uh, that we can offer here. So let me just share my screen. So you should be able to see, hopefully be able to see my screen accordingly, but you know, touching on the points around, you know, congestion and heat maps and occupancy limits. You can see here, if I'm an employer, I can see my various different offices here on the left-hand side. I have a, a legend here showing what's overcrowded, what's above limit or near full. And I can see exactly what is going on at that particular office at that point in time. And so when we perform contact tracing, as I mentioned, is when we're walking, you know, that app is actually on that mobile device, entering that zone. That's when contact tracing is actually activated for this Boston office as well. And so I can drill down and see how many devices or interactions are happening at my various different sites um, globally. But the idea is, is that I can see that, you know, through my various different offices, I can see what actual 
person is at that particular site at any point in time. So when I look here, so this is someone who's downloaded the points of WorkSafe mobile application, and then I've, you know, the status, that person's currently not on site at this point in time. I'm able to measure the amount of interactions that that person's had at that point in time, as well as the average interaction duration and the ability to see when they checked in or when their last activity is. So, you know, if it was me coming onto the site, I was device ID E3 E3627, I would then notify that I was, uh, I would notify my employer of that device ID and then notify who I've actually come into contact with and drill down at that particular site uh, and what is happening uh, across my offices. So, you know, I'm sure you have more questions around contact tracing, but the, the whole point of this exercise is to show you that we have you know, data available uh, on a dashboard, updating real time by shipping a mobile device to perform contact tracing. And you can see here, we've got other offices here that actually does, uh, is running live in terms of the number of you know, average durations and interactions that haven't happened accordingly and being able to drill down there accordingly. So when we look at you know, heat maps, so leveraging the Panasonic lighting infrastructure, we start to look at heat maps. So we have the mapping capability or we can use existing maps. So being able to understand, right, what areas are congested in, in this particular site, or what are the hot zones, we're able to leverage the Bluetooth infrastructure and get you know, that three to five seats uh, accuracy uh, with these heat maps, uh, but it's, you know, particularly you know, suitable for those environments where you have high, high amounts of foot traffic or people working within those um, spaces accordingly. We look at, when we look at zonal-based analytics, um, so not only at the GPS level and tracking the occupancy at the building, um, we're being able to actually provide real-time insights based on zonal. So being able to draw a particular zone on a map and understanding exactly how many people are within that environment or that zone at, at any point in time. To be able to draw a zone here, it's literally drag and drop. It's not having to update or do any software implementations to be able to do that. So that's when we look at you know, zonal-based inf uh, information and insights uh, to understand, right, do I need to set thresholds according to that particular zone? And then when we look into, right, well, I want to understand how many people are moving and how they're moving within my space. This could be used as more of a, a cleaning, uh, you know, deploying this point of work safe solution to cleaners and understanding how they're moving within a particular site there. And so you can see here that these are actually, you know, device IDs that someone has actually downloaded the mobile app. And I'm able to actually show uh, and replay uh, this, uh, you know, person moving or this cleaner within this site, leveraging the Panasonic Bluetooth uh, lighting infrastructure there. So I'll just take you back to the presentation here. So obviously we've gone through congestion supervised and the heat maps, which will be pretty straightforward. The cleaning monitor, you saw those dots to understand how cleaners are moving within the particular site there um, and being able to timestamp and those hot zones. We can also provide the heat maps with cleaning monitor, but the idea is to understand the path replay. Wayfinding is our strong point. So that's linked to the case of being able to navigate people safely within that particular environment. So pre-COVID era, we specialize in wayfinding and location services. So being able to guide people on that blue dot that you see within the map that you used to for outdoors, we have that for the indoor environment. Um, and being able to take an actual floor plan and provide this within a mobile app and provide real-time accurate wayfinding is key when there's certain compliance standards of being able to make people go in one way and enter another. And it's actually working 100% offline. So there's no active internet connection. When we look, you know, describe wayfinding, we're not having to connect to Wi-Fi. We're not having to connect to GPS. It's leveraging the Bluetooth technology infrastructure Panasonic provide. Um, and we don't do anything like fingerprinting or anything like that. So this is something that you might or have already seen with us that can be used uh, for that, even that uh, employee experience. But in this case, it's around wayfinding there. And so in terms of other use cases that we provide, so us being a platform in indoor location services, you know, that navigation, that blue dot, you can see within that map, 
you know, some uh, deployments that we've done is around location sharing. So it ties into what Robert said around that smart building uh, experience and employee experience. It's, it's not just the, the return to work, but this is, can be a long-term investment to some of these use cases that you see for 12 months once, in 12 months time once we leave the current situation that we're in. Occupancy and utilization analytics that you've seen, but you know, being able to not use it for COVID purposes, it might be for things like asset tracking and uh, understanding where my certain RFID scanners are at any point in time. Track equipment in real time. So being able to understand where those assets are by sticking a Bluetooth tag to them is what we can also be able to support in those use cases. Location-based en engagement. So being able to serve up offers at the right time and place in a retail store, in an office, there is no point engaging with someone if there's no accurate um, positioning of where that person is within that store. Smart check-in. So you know, being able to remove that clock in, clock out feature or sign in feature, being able to check in uh, accordingly there. And so what I'll do to wrap you know, our return to work offering before I hand it over to Robert, is just quickly show you a video just to wrap up the point to work safe solution around, well, this is you know, what we're able to provide now that might trigger some, uh, obviously some interest around how we can actually support you and your employees back to work. So let me just show you a video here. How can you ensure the safety of your employees as they get back to work? Meet WorkSafe, a contact tracing solution for employers. It's easy to get started with just an app and a dashboard. Employers simply draw a virtual bubble around the building and set occupancy limits in the dashboard. Employees get the WorkSafe app on their smartphone with daily anonymized IDs. The app only activates the moment the employee enters the building with an automatic GPS check-in. That's when you know that your phone starts protecting you. When you're at work, WorkSafe automatically detects that a phone is near even when it's in the pocket. It uses Bluetooth Low Energy, the official technology chosen by Google and Apple. It's private and secure. You can turn off the app at any time during the day. Employees are in control by default. If an employee tests positive for the virus, they share their anonymous WorkSafe ID with their HR manager. The employer can then notify employees who are at risk as they came close to the person who tested positive. Their anonymity is preserved by default. It allows employers to react quickly to protect employees and ensure business continuity. With the dashboard, they can also manage occupancy counts, people flows, and congestion in the building. WorkSafe is brought to you by Pointer, the global leader in indoor location. Get started today with a simple monthly pricing per active user. No upfront fees or investment required. Keep your employees cool. safe with WorkSafe. Get started. Cool. So what I'll do now, hopefully you can see through the video and, and that quick down. I know it's a lot to take in, but you can see based on how we're supporting the people return to work and the employees to those large buildings, that through that demonstration, you can see that we've taken our existing technology stack um, and being able to adapt this to the safe re-entry to work. So what I'll do now is walk you through in terms of, well, what are we you know, doing around the retail front? So I know that there might be a number of guests around, well, how are we actually being able to you know, support retail use cases? And we're more than happy to take questions around here, but hopefully you can see obviously the return to work. We can also support other use cases around, well, let me engage with my shoppers within the retail environment where do I need to place certain um, you know, uh, products within an aisle or within a certain place? Or how do I assign restock and enable click and collect in real time? So you know, retail, smart building, any type of large build, building, we're able to support you know, these various different use cases that you can see uh, on, on my screen here. And, and this applies for you know, warehouses, DC, uh, supply chain and logistics, as well as you know, food production, so you can you know, obviously see how we can support retailers there. And so now I'll hand it over to Robert to talk about, well, how we can actually you know, work together and provide uh, what we do combined with the Panasonic uh, lighting infrastructure there. Robert? Yes, thank you, Trev. Excellent job. Um, so I thought that was a, a, a very good explanation um, and very helpful videos to help understand 
uh, the solutions that um, you as our partner are providing on the front end uh, with the application itself and addressing the different use cases that have popped up as a result of COVID and also addressing ongoing use cases out there in the marketplace. So let's see here. Okay, so for us um, as Panasonic Lighting, many of you know us out there in the marketplace for our lighting solutions. So what we're doing is taking our existing portfolio um, of lighting and components and making them smart. So in here, you can see the entire bucket of solutions on the left. We're adding wireless controls uh, using Bluetooth as the controls and beacon technology that we're implementing. So right there at the top, you can see a couple different uh, control solutions or components that are being integrated into the fixture. In this case, we have a simple two by two uh, troffer with an integrated or intelligent fixture sensor controller. Uh, you can think of it like a little Swiss Army knife that's embedded into the, the fixture itself that's capable of doing multiple things. Um, so we'll, we'll cover those solutions in a little bit. And so when you have this infrastructure in place overhead, uh, you can then unlock uh, IoT solutions with partners of ours such as Pointer. So having the proper infrastructure in place that's being used for uh, code uh, required things such as controls, but it's doing double duty being able to provide the beaconing overhead uh, to interact with the telephones below and, and the apps that are on there uh, from, from, from our great partners from Pointer. So uh, that's our path forward as an organization. Let's see here if I can get it to go forward. So the basic concept here uh, for lighting going forward, um, as Trev was mentioning, uh, GPS outdoors. We're all used to that. And of course, the global positioning system out there um, uses satellites overhead. So we're reframing lighting uh, as being the indoor positioning or IPS uh, satellite overhead. So lighting is the new network overhead indoors. Uh, the reason for that is, as you can see on the right hand side above the woman there, um, lighting is designed and evenly spaced out. And now that lighting has become digital, um, we can do different things beyond just provide light output. So the, the power supplies themselves, the drivers, have auxiliary outputs on them and we're able to power different components off of those outputs, such as our intelligent fixture devices. So in this case we're showing right now is a retail solution with a little wireless end cap control node that's capable of uh, being the, the control beacon and satellite overhead. So um, that's the concept here, is that lighting is the new network indoors. So we as an organization at Panasonic chose to go with Bluetooth as the backbone of our control system uh, for many different reasons. Uh, Bluetooth is a ubiquitous technology that's been around for a long time. Uh, there's been different iterations of it. Uh, so the Bluetooth LE mesh technology um, was born out of the consumer Bluetooth that came about for a simple file transfer. And it's gone through, as I mentioned, many different iterations. It's widely available out there. And so it makes the most sense for us to deploy an architecture that's capable of doing not only the lighting controls, but also acting as a beacon overhead to interact with the phones below. Uh, moreover, um, the technology itself does provide um, the 128-bit AES encryption uh, from end to end. So um, if you take a look at the different technology solutions that are available for indoor positioning, as an example, and if you go through and, and, and you have the different solutions, you talk about availability, cost effectiveness, accuracy, limitations, and, and future proofness, if you want to call it that, and, and you put it head to head, as I call it, taking the Pepsi challenge versus other solutions out there in the marketplace, it's the best of breed from a technology standpoint. Um, so if you take a look at other technologies such as 
VLC is an example. Um, although it does provide extremely accurate indoor positioning, from a use case standpoint and feasibility standpoint, um, it's, it's kind of a thumbs down on uh, the reality of being used by everyday users with phones. Um, and there's some other examples out there of other technologies. So from a use case standpoint, um, these are the reasons why uh, Panasonic chose to go with Bluetooth for its controls and IoT uh, solutions going forward. So we take a building block approach. As I mentioned, Panasonic Lighting is a combination of two organizations here in North America, Douglas Lighting Controls and Universal Lighting Technologies. So many people in the lighting industry know Universal as a component supplier to many OEMs out there in the marketplace, uh, providing power supplies such as the LED driver that we show there, along with LED uh, boards, light engines, et cetera, uh, for light output. So we're also manufacturing integrated control devices as well and attaching them, as I mentioned, to the auxiliary output on these drivers and embedding those solutions inside of the luminaire to provide a connected luminaire. We're then pairing that with the Douglas Network Light Management System that's been out there in the marketplace for many, many years. Uh, we're communicating um, with that, that host back on via Bluetooth, as I've mentioned before, and we're layering on services. So in this case, our, our very important partner, Pointer, is our IPS and WorkSafe partner that's pairing with our backbone to deliver new business outcomes. So from our perspective, the Panasonic Lighting Advantage is we are the vertically integrated lighting company that's manufacturing and designing all of the smart components that go inside the luminaires, from the drivers to control components and light boards, LED boards. Um, and that's very important um, because we're able to create economies of scale and deliver these solutions at the best price uh, and performance possible. So uh, let's go over some of the integrated control components. Um, so as I mentioned, the, the three before, what I'd like to do is focus on uh, number two here, which is, I mentioned, kind of our um, Swiss Army knife, if you will, embedded into this two by two fixture. It's the intelligent fixture sensor controller. It's doing everything. It's doing control. It's doing beaking. It's doing daylight harvesting. And it's doing the PIR sensing for occupancy control. So it's able to uh, multitask. You don't have to use all of those different functions. Um, it's up to uh, the user in the space how they want to use that device. A few other options. Uh, we do have the wireless end cap control uh, that looks just like an end cap on um, a, a strip fixture, linear strip fixture that you see a lot of times in retail. And then of course we do have uh, a more cost-effective component that does go inside of uh, luminaires that's absent of the sensing capabilities, but is capable of doing the dimming control and the beaking overhead. So from a light management system standpoint, um, it does provide granular control and sensing capabilities. We're able to group all these different devices in different zones and rooms using the Douglas Backbone to do that. Uh, we're able to <clears throat> provide closed loop daylight harvesting, which is very important to many of you on the phone um, from a sequence of design and control standpoint. And as I mentioned before, inherently, because we are using Bluetooth, it is doing double duty. So it is able to provide uh, the indoor positioning backbone uh, for mobile software developer kits, such as the pointer solution for XYZ coordinates going forward. So just real quickly to give you an overview of the backbone from a light management system perspective, this is uh, the solution provided by the, the Douglas company within Panasonic Lighting. This is uh, the light control unit over on the left-hand side. This is the main brain, if you will. This is the central controller that's able to manage everything within the building. So it's, of course, it's able to do time schedules, national local clocks, it handles the daylight harvesting closed loop, open loop, and provide thresholds out there. It has all the advanced behaviors that you need in an advanced control system. From an expansion standpoint, it can handle uh, buildings both large and small. It has advanced integration, um, such as DMX for color control, 
It can handle tunable light, which is very important. Uh, we talked about you know, occupant well-being before uh, circadian rhythm and the well standard 2.0 is, is a big deal. And of course, uh, we do offer BACnet integration as well as other uh, RS-232 ASCII integrations for AV systems and shade control. And so that's the main unit. The way that we talk to our wireless luminaires is by adding a simple translator. So on the right, top right-hand side, we have a Bluetooth gateway and it tethers off of this main control unit. And that's how we're able to send Bluetooth commands out from the main unit out to the different luminaires. And of course, uh, because it is Bluetooth from a provisioning or commissioning standpoint, you can use an app on a phone or a tablet and simply uh, commission your lighting management system very easily in the space without having to use a very complicated um, you know, software solution on a laptop. So from an implementation standpoint, very easy to implement, very easy to set up, has all the advanced solutions built in. All right, so from a control standpoint, we offer a centralized command and control solution called Checklight. Um, so on the left-hand side, uh, from an architecture standpoint, just to show you real quickly, you have all the different Bluetooth devices. As I mentioned, the Bluetooth gateway is what's coordinating all the Bluetooth devices on the, the main level there. It interacts with the lighting control unit, which is in the middle, and then we gain access out of the building through a cell modem that goes up to the Panasonic Lighting Check Light IoT platform for energy dashboard and central command and control purposes. So the Check Light dashboard is built on the Azure Cloud Backbone from Microsoft. And its main purpose today uh, is to provide a dashboard for energy management and simple controls and, and retro commissioning. So um, in California, ADR 2.0 and, and being ADR already is very important. Uh, so this is the solution out there. From an enterprise perspective, you can see there, if you've got multiple buildings, multiple LCUs, it all ties up via the cloud to provide you with a holistic or single pane of glass dashboard to control your entire enterprise and get energy management information back uh, from a holistic standpoint. So that's the check light solution. Um, And then moving on from there, just tying it all together um, from an IT or SCADA backbone perspective, the different layers. So if you look at this holistic solution that we've talked about today, Trev did a great job talking about the pointer app and middleware solution software developer kit. So on the very, very bottom, we've got the telephone with the, the app itself and the middleware. That's what pointer is providing the hardware infrastructure that's capable of providing the advanced use cases and everything regarding contact tracing and the spaghetti mapping and everything else and, and heat maps that comes from the digital ceiling overhead with our IPS, IPS enabled luminaires and all feeds up to the cloud. Um, from an interaction standpoint or integration standpoint, uh, the app itself is uh, doing a lot of the work uh, from an uh, IPS perspective, going back directly to Pointer's Cloud in this perspective. So to wrap up real quickly on these solutions uh, with Panasonic and Pointer, the, the trusted leaders in workplace technology, um, we are able at Panasonic to provide um, custom solutions. So some of the technology that I talked about, or, or talked about already today from a luminaire standpoint, uh, such as the strip fixture, uh, we're working with a very large retailer in North America and we're, we, we customized that solution to, to meet their needs. So Panasonic Lighting is an agile organization and we're able to customize the solutions to meet the, the needs of our very large enterprise customers. Obviously Panasonic is a, is a well-known global brand out there in the marketplace. Uh, so we continue to invest in R&D and continue to move our organization forward from a technology standpoint. Um, everything that we do today uh, with our wireless technology, uh, because we are using Bluetooth Low Energy Mesh, we are IPS ready. Um, and everything that we do is accurate and secure, as I mentioned. So 
Um, Trev did touch upon uh, personal identifiable information, PII, uh, GDPR, um, so the General Data Protection Regulation. Um, all of that stuff is a part of our solution and the venue itself or the end user owns the data. So none of what we're talking about today is owned by either one of us, it's owned by the end user um, and you're able to do with that information as you please. So Trev, I'll go back to you. Yeah, and, and thanks, uh, Robin. I, I think um, you know one thing I keep hearing is Bluetooth, and so you know that leads me on to the point of future proofing. You know, Bluetooth has been around for quite some time now, and and into the near future, it's now a lot easier to deploy, um, and especially built on our algorithms that leverage Bluetooth and energy. You know, we're able to really future proof to go right. Bluetooth has been here; it will be here. Um, and so we're all on a Bluetooth and same with Panasonic and with that combination provided, we are providing a future-proof solution and, and we will hands down win when we are demoing our product, um, you know, now and into the future uh, because, you know, we are, as well as Panasonic, we, you know, we are a small but big business and we, we touch, you know, 18 countries to date. And so, you know, through our constant R&D has allowed us to be able to demonstrate that you know, we can provide, you know, an easy and scalable solution. Uh, and we do mean that because we do work with large multinationals, including the US government, um, so that, you know, we don't want to have to be on site every time there's a change within that environment. or so when we're converting a, a CAD drawing into a map, you know, we are built to scale. Um, and so, you know, our team are simply you know, computer scientists and engineers. It's 95% of the business are engineers. So, that's all we want to do is you know, provide a scalable solution, leveraging on Bluetooth to future proof, but as well as cost effective, you know, you don't want to be deploying, you know, large heavy in integrations to be able to provide location services. You want something that, you know, is quick to deploy, leveraging the Panasonic kit um, that you can leave, forgive and forget. You know, we have deployments that we haven't touched for, you know, four or five years, for example, and they still, we haven't even touched or been on site. So, Something that is cost effective it is, is, is in crucial for that smart building play. But when we look at WorkSafe and what we've been speaking to you about today, there's so much hot air in market at the moment. We have something that is available now and is cost effective. Um, and so, you know, please do get in touch if you want to have a look at, you know, pricing and all that. But, you know, the use cases such as contact tracing, safe wayfinding, cleaning management and reporting, occupancy, congestion and measurement, we have ready to go. Um, and so that can be made available. You're not having to pay, you know, call on the large SIs, software integrators to put together a solution. We have something that's turnkey, ready to go with the Panasonic infrastructure. Um, and so I think, you know, quick to deploy. If you came around and said, right, we need something now, we can give you something now and, and also an option for investing in the future of your smart building agenda that you may have. Yeah, great. Trev, uh, just to let you know, I handed the control back over to you as well. Cool. Thanks. Good to know. Well, I think that, Robert, did that leave us for Q&A? It does leave us with the Q&A, and I'm sure we have lots of questions out there from our attendees. Yeah, so, Eva, so, do we have any interesting questions? Yeah, of course, of course. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Robert, and thank you, Trev, uh, for the presentation. So uh, now we've got uh, some questions. Let's have a look. Um, so the first one would be, what are the requirements for deployment? I think that one, uh, uh, Robert or Trav, you can, I don't know if you can answer that. So I think it, it, it comes in two parts, right? So from a holistic standpoint to, you know, with all the different use cases that Trav touched upon as a deliverable, um, you know, the solutions are, it is a combination. So it's a combination of the hardware and the software. However, if there's an immediate need, I'll let Trev talk about uh, going forward. If you need something within 24 hours and, and you need that, I'll let, I'll let Trev touch upon that because there is a way to do that. Yeah, so with our point to work safe solution, we are able to ship a mobile app in iOS and Android um, within a couple of days. Um, to be able to issue to employees. There's no infrastructure required on point to work safe standard. It's just simply leveraging contact tracing that device to device interactions 
and then being able to um, leverage GPS technology outdoors. So when someone actually comes on site and they leave off site, it's then only running um, contact tracing when they arrive and when they depart. So on the standard side, we have something ready to go now. And then we have a lot of our customers and partners, including Panasonic go, right, well, you know, we can leverage the Panasonic kit. Let's get that deeper analytics and uh, zonal based information and heat maps um, that would require the Panasonic uh, Bluetooth low energy infrastructure. So WorkSafe standard would be now ready to go. WorkSafe plus leveraging the Panasonic infrastructure that Robert, feel free to chip in, but it'd be more around the installation and deployments from the Panasonic right. side uh, with the yeah. same mobile application and dashboard made available. That's correct. And so all those solutions that we show you today, uh, they're being implemented. So the the linear strip retrofit or end cap solution. We've been deploying for quite a while, over a million of those devices deployed in, in retail environments today. Um, the intelligent fixture solutions that I touched upon in, in the two by two troffer, those solutions are available today. And so um, if you have an immediate need for infrastructure, we'll, we'll able to deliver on that. Um, and as we continue to expand our line beyond what we have now, because we do have plans for that, um, you'll start seeing newer, more, um, uh, let's call it retrofit friendly solutions from a lighting perspective, um, such as things like smart type C. So if you're in the lighting world, um, those types of things may be coming down the pike here relatively soon. Cool, next question, Eva. Yeah. So the next question would be, uh, can non-phone based Bluetooth device be issued to people in the space without downloading an app? And is there a price tag associated with those Bluetooth tags? So from our side, from the pointer side, we would simply provide for the WorkSafe solution offering, um, we would provide the mobile application um, because we believe that this provides more granular, like real-time insights and that deeper analytics to make those decisions as opposed to a tag-based solution. So from speaking on behalf of Pointer, uh, you know, we're shipping a mobile application um, to be able to gather those information and send push notifications, those occupancy limits. So for the WorkSafe solution, tag-based at the moment, no, but I'm sure if there's a requirement um, you know, we could something that we can look at and follow up with depending on what you're trying to do. Robert, in terms of tags on your side? Yeah, so from a, an infrastructure standpoint, the solutions that we're deploying today overhead um, do interact with the phones and the phone is handling most, if not all the processing power in order to provide the advanced analytics and insights that our customers want. Uh, a tag-based solution, although um, it's rather inert, it requires a more active overhead digital ceiling and sniffing technology overhead that adds significant costs um, than the solution that we're deploying with Pointer today. So there are pros and cons um, in leveraging an existing handheld phone that almost every single one the person, person in the world has today is the the best approach for rapid implementation and advanced analytics. And just to chip in on that, like device, you know, we, we're getting questions like that all the time. And to be able to deploy a device these days, a, a cheap Android device, you know, they're very cost effective and low price point to be able to get up and running immediately uh, and provide those, you know, more granular analytics to be able to do that. So, you know, we are seeing companies look at wearables and, you know, we take the view that Wearables are expensive. They're not proven yet. What we're doing is providing our existing technology stack that is proven and tested, and we've just adapted it for the return to work offering. So, you know, we're, you know, having to provide cheap Android devices or leveraging the existing uh, RFID scanners in that environment that are already iOS and Android, um, or even company issued devices. You know, there's large multinationals out there that are issuing company phones. So being able to do that and being able to enforce contact tracing on the mobile application is entirely up to the employer and how they do it. Um, so, you know, they might do a blanket rule to go, right, we need everyone to 
use their own personal ident uh, personal devices to do contact tracing, or the organisation might issue their own devices. So, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, cool. So the next question would be, uh, is there a charge for the iCloud storage? So from, I assume the question is around storage. Um, from the pointer side on, on us capturing the analytics, uh, there's no charge to be able to host it. We host on Azure um, globally. We have a very close relationship with Microsoft there. Um, so from, you know, the hosting is included within uh, our active usage license costs. Um, but then if we want to be able to deploy on premise, which we also can, um, it would be simply just a fixed setup cost um, to be able to deploy on premise. So to answer your question, no hosting costs on our side when we look at point to work safe. Um, Robert, on your side, that'd be pretty much bundled with ours, wouldn't it? Yeah, it does. So from a go to market perspective, we do go to market in several different ways. Uh, we have existing partnerships today in the smart building space for implementation. So we also work with end users that have their own chosen partners that they feel comfortable with. And we're also capable of working with those uh, integration or implementation specialists. So uh, we're flexible in, in, in how we go to market and how we implement, um, but we have chosen to do certain things a certain way in order to meet the demands of the marketplace now. That's the reason why we're doing this today with Pointer. Cool. Right. cool. Uh, we got another one here. Uh, what is the maximum amount of uh, fixtures per system? I think that one's for you, Robert. Yeah, so there is a limitation. It does scale out. What I can say is to date, um, we have not maxed out the network light management system backbone for the number of nodes we've deployed. And we've been around for over 50 years deploying these uh, these solutions. And I think just to add on that point, in, t in terms of pointers, how we leverage the Bluetooth beacons within the infrastructure, you know, we typically deploy one beacon per around a thousand square feet um, or around a hundred square, me uh, square meters per beacon. Uh, we're not having to use every single Lumi lighting control to support our location engine. It's simply, you know, we've designed our algorithms to be able to be you know, less infrastructure and more value uh, to support um, our algorithms too. So I thought I just might add that in, Robert. Yeah, it's a great point. So to the value of having the digital ceiling overhead is having the proper coverage so that as our partner such as Pointer has different IP in how they leverage the digital ceiling is up to them. But having that solution overhead that's capable of beaking is very, very important from a coverage standpoint. How our partners implement and, and optimize is, is a different use case, as Trev mentioned. So they're able to optimize and not, um, you know, drag the infrastructure down, if you will, in order to provide a solution. Yeah, just to add on, add on that point, like, you know, we're hearing many deployments requiring thousands and thousands of beacons within just a simple retail store where we would only need you know a couple of hundred subject to the size of the space so more infrastructure doesn't mean more location uh, capability from our standpoint but we have the flexibility with the panasonic kit as robert mentioned to be able to switch on switch off uh, and select which beacons we need according to that environment to suit we could probably do one more robert do you think yeah yeah all right. Um, so uh, the next question would be, uh, what regional or local Panasonic US reps can you distributors contact for scheduling future sales calls and the demonstrations for um, or trainings? That's a great question. And it, we do go to market with different partners. And so uh, that, that leads to the, the link on the last slide there, uh, the email. Um, so if you send an email, into that email address, upgrade at unvlt.com. We'll be able to take that question offline and address it appropriate for the different region in North America you are located. 
Yeah, cool. Um, so the next one would be, uh, what is the feasibility of modifying an existing lighting environment to adapt to the software integration? So I guess that's with me, Robert. Um, what we require is uh, we leverage iBeacon. We can also use Eddystone, um, subject to the, the requirements, but we, by default, we su support iBeacon within lighting controls. So as long as we can configure the major and minor uh, or have the list of beacons there and, the, and match the frequency um, advertisement levels uh, for power then, and the ability to switch the beacon on and off, um, that's all we need to be able to deploy um, and use an existing infrastructure. So as you're probably familiar, you know, beacon, iBeacons come in various different formats and infrastructure available. Um, some deployments we've done a mixture of with Panasonic, their lighting controls, and then some areas we've deployed battery powered beacons and, and become a more of a hybrid setup. Um, so to answer your question, as long as it's iBeacon, we can configure the beacons um, then, you know, we can understand where they are located. Um, we can leverage um, that existing Bluetooth infrastructure. Right. Uh, we have a questions about uh, contact tracing. So does this use an individual cell phones to the Bluetooth device? Can you just repeat that? So does it use, just repeat that again for me, Ava, sorry. And it have individual cell phones, like personal cell phones, to the uh, Bluetooth device? Yeah, so I think I understand that question. So it's as long as Pointer WorkSafe is the iOS and Android mobile application is running in the background or in the foreground of that actual device, either work or personal, um, then we're able to measure the interactions and average interactions between employees only when they come on site or when they leave the site um, through the use of GPS technology when entering the site. So if I answered the, the question correctly, it's as long as it's any iOS, Android, personal or work, or even RFID scanners out, out in markets such as Panasonic's, and it's iOS, Android, we can tap into those devices to perform contact tracing. Okay, cool. So uh, we only got a few minutes left. So we'll take one last question and we'll reply to the others offline. So um, who should we contact about uh, delivering the lighting control solutions and the pointer applications in order to inco incorporate into a unified user interface? Yeah, so via the, this email address, if you send your inquiry into the email, we'll be able to address that uh, that inquiry directly uh, with that that entity and be able to move forward in the best appropriate fashion that meets the needs. Okay, um, cool. Um, so thank you all for taking the time out to be here today and hope you have enjoyed today's event. Uh, you can find out more information on our website or you can email us if you want to find out more about our solutions. Uh, we'll also send you the emails like after this webinar, uh, which will include the presentation of this, uh, uh, of this webinar and uh, other information you might find interested in. Um, so thank you all and uh, enjoy the rest of your day today. Bye. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.